Fertility Talks. This is my live post my number 94. And tonight I'm so thrilled to have a special guest, my friend, friend and colleague, colleague, PM doctor, to the Chinese medicine medicine by the name of Denise Weisner. So he's here on the screen. And um, Hi. <laughs> before Hi. we get into the talk about, about well, we're going to talk about an awesome topic, awesome topic, which is let's talk Lou. Lou. So important, so important. People don't really talk about it, right? Okay. Um, but before we um, before we give you a background, background of why Denise is the expert. The expert. So Denise, so, Denise, uh, founder, founder of the Natural, Natural Healing and Acupuncture Healing. Clinic in West Los Angeles, and is an internationally recognized traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, specializing in sexuality and since um, 1992. And Denise has helped thousands of couples navigate meditation and often stressful journeys with fertility without losing their loving their loved ones. Uh, Denise is a certified sex coach. She's also uh, uh, board certified by the state of California and the American Board of Reproductive Medicine. She is the author of the new upcoming book, come out in spring. Right. And that's right. called and that's called me with love. The uh, whole body whole approach body of intimacy, intimacy, reigniting passion, passion, and increasing fertility. So how awesome is that? Awesome Thank that. you so much for being here. Yeah, love it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so let's go straight in. Because Lube is such an awesome talk. I think we can just talk about it forever, really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, because people uh, yeah, constantly ask me, oh, do you know, is it safe to use a lubricant, especially trying to consume? So the very first thing is, first thing is, why is it good? Why is it good to lube? Okay. Well, first of all, hopefully, if you're trying to make a baby, you make your own lubrication. But there are some situations where you might not make lube. Let's say you um, had a procedure done on your cervix, and maybe that's made it so you can't. Uh, have lubricants or you're on a drug like Clomid and that also decreases lubrication. So if you're trying to make a baby, sometimes we don't make a, enough lube. And what happens is to lubrication is needed for the sperm to travel to the egg. So, um, and to make sex, let's face it, a little enjoyable, right? So uh, if you don't produce your own, it's nice to use a, a lubrication. For women trying to conceive, there has to be special lubricants that are used. For women that are not trying to conceive, then they can use other lubes. So they're, they're different. There is a difference. But you would still, okay, so even if you're not trying to conceive, though, wouldn't you say that it's important to pick a good lube? Yes. I mean, it, you know, it, it can be really hard and painful if you're dry, if, you're, if your tissues are dry, it, it might not feel so good. So lubrication makes things a lot easier to flow and makes, makes it more enjoyable, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So, then, so then what should one be aware of when you're buying Okay, so I, I learned so much about lubrication. I didn't know this at all. And I, if I think about all the lubes I've used in my life, it like, ah, uh, not good. But Fever, I know, I know <laughs> nothing. Um, anyway, what, what we have to know is that our, our, our vaginas are have mucous membranes and like our skin absorbs things, so does our vagina. So we need to make sure that whatever we put in there um, is is clean and it's and and doesn't have preservatives or chemicals. So one thing we want to stay away from is is chemicals or preservatives like parabens. Parabens are used in some lube lubes. The FDA says they're fine, but um, they're preservatives. And I know I, I like to put natural things at me. So that's one thing. Glycerin is another additive that's added to a lot of. It's an alcohol sugar. It's added to lubricants, um, but glycerin can have an effect on the tissues and therefore make it, you, you can get more prone to maybe infections. Um, and, and, and glycerin, sperm doesn't like glycerin either. So we want to stay away from glycerin as a, as a lubricant with, in our lubes. And is, Another, it, is it glycerin because, is it the pH thing in the glycerin or what is it about? Yeah, it, it kind of it kind of changes this this osmolality that we're going to talk about in a moment of the lube. Um, and that's sort of its own topic. And 
what it what it does is um, it, it's just it's an, it can damage sperm and it, it creates imbalances in the flora and fauna, right? So we have what's called a microbiome. You probably heard, you know many people have heard of that word, and that's the that's sort of the, the the healthy bacteria that lives in our vagina, like it lives in our gut. And we want to make sure that that stays healthy. And when we introduce things into um, the VJJ, then we want to make sure that they they don't cause uh, imbalance in the pH and other things. So that's nice. that's yeah. Okay. And the so other thing, go ahead. Yeah. The other thing to stay yeah. away from is petroleum-based products. Like some people will be like, yeah, I put like baby oil or Vaseline, and petroleum-based products have xenoestrogens, like bad estrogens, right? And so we don't want to use petroleum-based products in this delicate area. Absolutely. So that's what to stay away from. Yeah. Okay, that's really great. Okay, I hope you guys are taking notes. Right, notes. Okay. Uh, and then how about this whole uh, water-based water-based Okay, so there's different kinds of lube. There's water-based lube and there's oil-based lube. And water-based lube is the most common kind because it doesn't break down condoms, right? Because if you use oil-based lube, like coconut oil is one of my favorite lubes, but coconut oil will break a condom. So, yeah. Wow, good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So water-based lubes should be used with condoms. And water-based lubes, what they are is, um, there's a lot out there, and they have a thing called osmolality. And, and you can actually go online and find out all the different lubes and their osmolality. That's a, that's a big word. And that means that it, it's really how, um, how the ability of this cell to shrink and swell. So like a sponge. So lubes that have a high osmolality basically pull water out of the vaginal, the vagina's tissues. So it kind of makes you more dry, even though it, you feel more wet, okay? And, and some of these lubes out there, I'm not gonna name names, have like four, three to four times the amount of osmolality that's, that's needed, right? So wow. the, what, what you, and then, so what you wanna find a lube is isotonic. And that means it has the same, it doesn't pull fluid out of the tissues, it has the same, osmolality of our, our body. Okay, so that's a big buzzword, isotonic. Yeah. Okay, so then what does that mean? So even, so when you're trying, trying to conceive, are you wanting a water? So nobody wants so nobody, it. You don't want the water. No, nobody, nobody wants, a, a, I mean, if you're trying to conceive, you really want to have an isotonic lube. You want right. to have the pH be the same. I mean, it's really for everyone because it's, it's that feeling like we're wetter, but really the tissues get very irritated when all the, the fluid's being pulled out of them to make more lubricant lubrication. Well, that's a really great thing that you're mentioning because if I think about all the menopausal women that complain about their dry vaginas, and if they're wanting sex, they're using these kinds of lubes, and they're actually aggravating the condition, not knowing Correct. that. Correct. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I don't know, I, you know, if I think back on earlier days when I used some of these lubes, I remember that I would put some on and then I'd feel like really dry and I'd have to use more and it didn't feel very good down there. So that might be one of the things. And there's, there's definitely companies that make lubes that are iso, that are isotonic, that are the same, that, do, that have the regular, the isotonic, same osmolality as our tissues. And they're really important for people trying to conceive as well. So the lubricants that are good, that are baby friendly, also are isotonic. And they're, and what happens when you're trying to make a baby is your pH gets a, stays a little more, it needs to be a little more alkaline during that little window where you're fertile. Because, you know, you make cervical mucus and it's more alkaline. And that means the sperm can live in, in that type of cervical mucus. So you want a lube that's a little more alkaline, right? Normally the pH is the, of the vagina is acidic, Yes but this window. So the baby friendly lubricants have a different, a higher pH than the regular lubricants. And there's like, I think there's like three that have been FDA approved now for baby, that are baby friendly lubes. Right. And everybody knows, everybody pre -feed, knows pre -feed. but you know, you and I both don't love it. And tell them. Um, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. pre -seed. I recommended it for years. <laughs> sorry. Um, it ha it contains parabens. And again, the FDA, and if you go on their website, they'll tell you that like we have parabens, the FDA says they're fine, they don't cause problems, but like you and I are talking about, I don't necessarily want to preserve it as if I can avoid it up me. So um, it has some, you know, the pre-seed is okay. I mean, I've, I've had patients that have used it, but I think there are better choices. So if you're trying to conceive, there's another uh, uh, one that's called, I think by, by um, Baby Dance, and it, and it doesn't have parabens. 
uh, Fairhaven, I believe, makes it. And there's one from the UK that's waiting, uh, that's waiting approval by the FDA that's called, um, which is organic. It's mm -hmm. called, it's by Yes, Yes, Yes. I think you might be able to order it now. I'm not sure about Canada or US, but I know that it's, it's waiting approval by the FDA. Right. And so those who you have been with me, I would say it used to be called Yes Baby. And then they were rebranding. And I guess, as you're saying, they were the approval. But I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Yeah. I thought it was just, just rebranding. Yeah. But um, we, were able, I, to, we I, were able to see you before. Yeah, I, I talked to one of the owners of, I interviewed her for my book, and she was really amazing. She, they were in the process of trying, waiting approval. Okay. So um, yeah, hopefully that will come out. So, um, but when you're trying to have a baby, you could also maybe use a little, and we don't really know because there's no research, but you might be able to use a little coconut oil, which is one of my personal favorites. Um, the idea really is you don't want to use spit if you're trying to conceive as a lube, um, right? Right. I mean, you can use a little, but you don't want to like really have a lot of spit down there um, because you don't want to get it close to where the cervical fluid is and the cervix is because we need the sperm to get right through the cervix without spit because in a Petri dish, spit can kill sperm. It's not to say that one shouldn't have oral sex. It, it's just like, because it's not usually a lot of spit. It's really that we don't want to like use, you know, like tons of spit <laughs> as the loo. Total horking. Oh. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <Total> horking. <laughs> uh, yeah. I had to, I had to talk to, I actually interviewed some reproductive urologist for that, you know, because when I read that spit killed sperm, I was like, oh no, does that mean that no one could have oral sex? Because like, right. oh no, maybe, maybe that's going to kill sperm. But he, he kind of assured me that it would be, you'd have to get that spit like way up there. Um, that the, the, the studies are done in a Petri dish. So when a man is giving a sperm sample for the, for like an insemination, he can't, he's, he's told not to use any spit because it, it's concentrated in a Petri, in a, in a little dish. So, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and you know, here's the thing about North Americans, we're like all or nothing. All or nothing. So, Again, to reiterate, yeah, to reiterate, anything is moderation. Anything is moderation, right? So it's not right. like you can't, like you can have to stop or stop sex up and sex up. No, right. no, that's what I'm saying is like, yeah, it's just it's 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 that we can have it. It's just we don't want to use like a lot of spit as lube. Um, so there's things like oils, like coconut oil, and 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 we don't really know, but a little bit of coconut oil can be a really great lube, and we really don't know if it. It's bad for fertility. One of the reproductive urologists that I interviewed said vegetable oils were fine. Oh, okay, that's good to know. I yeah, um, I think the research was done on mineral oil, which and um, which they said was okay and is, is doesn't kill sperm, but mineral oil is a petroleum-based product, so I wouldn't want that at me either. Exactly. Exactly. Um, um, okay, and then and then we kind of covered this, but we might as well do it formally. What? What conditions is necessary for the I mean, if you let's say if you're on a like an antihistamine that will dry up your cervical mucus, so that would be a good thing to use a lube. Um, uh, if you if you're on Clomid, we you know then you might want to use a lube. If you're taking, I, I found this out that ibuprofen NSAIDs can dry up cervical mucus, so you might need a lube then. Or if you have like diabetes or inflammatory bowel disease. And believe it or not, stress can decrease our lubrication. So those would be some conditions where we would we would wanna have a lubrication. Or menopause, menopausal women, uh, as we, we said, uh, could be benefit from lube lubrication. Right, especially because you know, the tissues are thinner, wire, wire. Okay. Yeah, we, we were talking about rose oil as being a fabulous lubrication to plump up tissues as a, in a natural way for menopausal women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about uh, the rose oil and how you use it. Uh, rose oil, um, if you if you get just like concentrated rose oil, it usually comes in a little tiny bottle and it's very expensive. So you yeah. want to get a diluted kind, yeah. They usually dilute it with a, a, like a carrier oil, like jojoba oil, and um, we have it in our in our, our pharmacopoeia. And you just like you put it, you use it as a lubrication, and you put it in you. You can use it yourself at, to plump up the tissues, and it works really really well, and it helps with for menopausal women. Right. So, in this in this case, it means not even necessarily 
having sex is just that just putting it, putting it on. I would say it would be a treatment that you would actually put it on and, and help the tissues. And you could also use it for sex as well. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. I'm looking at my battery. My battery's almost going to die. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I might have to run away and you keep talking. <laughs> I can plug us in. I'm not even joking. I'm joking. Talk oh. to the audience and tell them a little bit more about your book. Okay. Oh, like, okay. One second. One second. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm writing a book. I've written a book. It will be published in April called Conceiving with Love. And it's a book that really goes over passion and intimacy and how to have that when you're trying to make a baby. Because if anyone knows when you're trying to make a baby, sometimes um, with time to intercourse and, and the stress of it all, uh, couples often don't connect. So my book is talking about techniques and exercises for both men and women to do individually and together in order to really make a baby with love. Um, even if you're not trying to have a baby, you could probably read it because there's a chapter on foreplay and orgasm and all sorts. And, and, even there's chapters on timing and chapters on uh, trauma. So I'm trying to cover everything that sort of gets in the way of really connecting and having love. So that's my book. That's awesome because you're so right. I mean, right. after a certain amount of time, it becomes such a, such a job, right? It's not even intimacy anymore. It's completely lost. And you know, you're just having babies and having babies. And so it's really wonderful to have insight and really clear cut things and tactical things that you can do to regain love and intimacy. Thank you. For yeah. Thank you. For yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And thank you so much for being here tonight. And um, I gained some insight, that's for sure. And I hope you all did. And like I said, take notes and buy the books that she's been saying. And um, just so you guys know, you don't get comments before by any comment at all. At all. That's um, true. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Uh, so, so next, next week, week, I forget what the topic is, but you know, it'll be awesome. Yeah, Another awesome. interview. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just want to reiterate about a week and a half ago, I did a live monthly fertility circle. And that was really that awesome. Was really awesome about that. Uh, and how to overcome it and creating again tactical tactics to overcome your stress and stress of not having it into having it into ability in any way so check that out if you haven't you haven't definitely get my book pathways of fancy and um wong dot life certainly you can go you can roll down below down below a lot of a lot of that you can I watch in the but I'll join my, join my live, 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 which is you can go through marymon.net. Okay, so thanks again, thanks again, and we'll definitely, we'll definitely be back, we'll back and we'll talk more about sex. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mary. Really appreciate it. Bye, everyone. See you next week. Oh, next oh, week, oh, week oh, is back to Wednesday, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. Take care. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye.